hello, hello, my friends. Today is a very good day. We are going to be talking all about the history of the Land Rover. So, let's do it. Well, let's say you're not familiar with this channel. Well, we talk about all things cars, primarily car history, because that's my cup of tea. And if that interests you, then go ahead and press the subscribe button, which might be on this corner, might be on that corner. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, who is this weird blonde girl? Good question. Very astute. Now, who I am, my name is Caitlin. I am into car history. I grew up in a mechanic shop. My dad's a mechanic. My brother's a mechanic. My uncle's a mechanic. And we've had our family business, which is a mechanic shop, for over 40 years. And that is how I got blessed to love cars. Okay. Now we are going to get to the Land Rover. Introductions are necessary because I find that rude people say rude things in the comments unless I tell them exactly who I am. So we have that aside. All right, now let's talk about this epic brand, the Land Rover. All right, now you know me. I like to go way, way back when I'm talking about the history of cars, all right? And we are going to start with the Rover Company, the brand, the manufacturer that would go on to offshoot both Land Rover and Range Rover. All right, it's 1878 and the Rover Company is founded by John Kemp Starley and William Sutton. Now, John Kemp Starley, if anybody is kind of a uh, history nerd, you might recognize that name. He is considered the father of the modern bicycle with his creation of the Rover safety bike. Now, something that should definitely be pointed out is that so many automotive manufacturers got their start with creating and selling bicycles. Now, some to know of the bicycles of this era, all right, and why John Kemp Starley's Rover safety bike was so revolutionary for bicycles? Well, the bikes at the time, you had the crazy penny farthings that had the gigantic uh, front wheel and then tiny back wheel. You had those super, super high-wheeled tricycles. All those were actually pretty darn dangerous. Now, why the Rover safety bike was groundbreaking rear wheel drive chain driven cycle that had two same size wheels. And that is our modern bicycle. Now from bicycles in 1901, they would go on to produce automobiles and then 1902, they would produce motorcycles. It's funny because typically in the history of most manufacturers, that kind of goes the other way. They go motorcycles to automobiles, but not in this case. So at this point, we're gonna fast forward just a little bit, okay? Now, the Rover Company assists the UK during World War I and World War II, and it's after World War II that we really start to get in to the first dominoes of the Land Rover. All right, now it's post-World War II in the UK, and you know what everybody's driving around? Well, all the American Jeeps that got left over there during World War II. You see, there were a ton of American Jeeps left over there from World War II. In total, 640,000 Jeeps were made for World War II for the forces, both Allied and U.S. forces, using them, loving them. It was pretty great. I know that number because I just had a radio show where we talked about the history of Jeep. Now, another thing that is important to paint a picture of the times is post-World War II, all of the European governments were telling their manufacturers that they needed to export or die. And you can imagine that Rover sees everybody driving these Jeeps around and thinks there's an opportunity right there. And there was, all right? Now, the Rover company didn't actually intend on having this a long-lasting line. And what they did do was they basically took, the prototype was highly, highly influenced by the Jeep. And it was even built on a Jeep chassis. All right, that is enough about the Jeep, okay? Now, let's fast forward to 1948, in which the Land Rover makes its grand debut at the 1948 Amsterdam Auto Show. Do you know who else made their introduction in 1948? You know darn well, I'm going to digress. If it's 1948, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Jaguar XK120. <laughs> That's right. That is right. The Jaguar XK120 made its grand debut at the Earl's Court Motor Show. 
It's my favorite car and I will always talk about it. Now, the design of the first Land Rover was done by Morris Wilkes, who was the chief designer of Rover, and also his brother, Spencer Wilkes, who was the executive director. A little interesting thing to point out is why do you see so many Land Rovers in these different varying shades of light green, huh? Well, primarily for the Series 1, it was because that's what they had. That was your military... Oh, bumping into things. That was your military surplus paint, all right? It was the paint that they were using on airplane cockpits. The more you know. Series 1, as I mentioned before, was designed for light industrial use with a steel box section chassis and aluminum body powered with a 1.6 liter petrol engine and a four-speed gearbox. Now, originally, the Rover company didn't intend on having Land Rover around for more than two or three years. They wanted to shoot it out, compete with the Jeeps, get a quick cash flow, export them to the States, and then be gone with it. But they realized that they had an opportunity with this brand. It's actually when the Series 1 became known as the Series 1, when they decided to make Series 2. And then, two years later, in 1958, we would see the launch of the Series 2, and it would be powered by the well-known two-and-a-quarter petrol engine. And now, something that's interesting to think about, that engine would be well used into the 80s. The Series 2 is available in a two-door off-road vehicle, four-door off-road, and a two-door pickup. And then a few years later, in 1961, we would have the introduction of the Series 2A. And there really weren't that many changes between the Series 2 and the 2A, except for cosmetic. Now, we would have a little bit of a design change in 1969. You would see the headlights go from being in the center grille position to being on the wings for all models. Now enough of this chit-chatting, let's go ahead and take an actual spin around the rover. This 1969 Series 2A is a 2,286 cc four-cylinder engine capable of 72 horsepower. Boom, boom. <laughs> and this is one of about 1,200 that were imported into the States during that year. Now, something that's interesting to note is the Series 2A was the peak for Rover sales at the time, selling 60,000 a year. All right. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this very informal first part of uh, Land Rover history. And if this is your cup of tea, well, then go ahead and press the subscribe button, which is somewhere. Elsewise, have a good one. Bye. Yeah.